In a world where we are more connected than ever, a threat looms in the shadows of technology. From malicious hackers and state-sponsored cyber warfare to insidious malware and data breaches, the dangers of the digital threat is ever-present, threatening individuals, businesses and governments around the world. Well, guess what I'm talking about? You guessed that right. Cyber threats, of course. On that note, hello everyone and welcome to Simply Learn. In today's session, we'll be discussing what are cyber attacks and various types of cyber attacks prevalent in today's times. But before we begin, if you're new to the channel and haven't subscribed already, consider getting subscribed to our channel Simply Learn to stay updated with all the latest technologies and hit that bell icon to never miss an update from us. So without any further ado, let's get started with today's topic. Firstly, let us have a quick introduction to what cyber attacks are. Now, the rise of digital age has brought unprecedented connectivity and convenience, but it has also introduced new avenues for malicious actors to exploit vulnerabilities. Cyber attacks encompasses a broad range of malicious activities where adversities leverage technology to infiltrate, disrupt, or compromise digital systems and data. So, in a nutshell, you can say it is a deliberate and malicious attempt to compromise computer networks, networks, system devices with intention of causing harm, stealing sensitive information or gaining any kind of unauthorized access. And having said that, with cyber attacks becoming more prevalent and severe, it has become crucial to address the cyber security skill gap and overcome the shortage of cyber security talent. So if you are interested in pursuing a career in cyber security and acquiring the necessary skills, then our postgraduate program in cyber security can be the right option for you. Well, gain expertise, <coughs> repeat. Gain expertise in defensive and offensive cybersecurity, digital forensics, ethical hacking, network security, penetration testing, and crucial domains with this intensive program. Our comprehensive program offers a curriculum that encompasses a wide range of in demand cybersecurity tools, hands on labs, and guided practices. And throughout the course, you will embark on a well structured learning journey starting with fundamental cybersecurity concepts and progressing through asset and inventory management, offensive security, and defensive security. To ensure your readiness for the industry, you will also engage in multiple projects allowing you to hone your skills and emerge as an exceptional cybersecurity professional. Furthermore, this course will help you learn comprehensive approaches to protecting your infrastructure and securing data, including risk analysis, mitigation, compliance and much more. So why wait? Hurry up and find the course link in the description box for more details. So make sure you check that out. And let us continue with our topic today now. So what is the motive behind cybersecurity attacks? Now that we have understood what cybersecurity acts, let us understand what is the motive behind it. Now that digital age has revolutionized how we interact, work and live, but it has also brought new challenges in fences for victims. Now the motive behind cyber attacks can be widely varied and they are often driven by different factors depending on the attacker's goals and intentions. So let us look at some of the motives behind cyber attacks. Now first on the list we have financial gain. Now one of the most prevalent <clears throat> repeat one of the most prevalent motivation for cyber attacks is financial gain they seek to steal sensitive financial information such as credit card details login credentials or any kind of personal data which they can sell on the black market or use to commit fraud and identity theft where attackers encrypt a victim's data and demand payment for decryption keys and also motivated by financial gain now second reason is industrial espionage now, in the corporate world, cyber attacks are sometimes carried out to gain a competitive advantage by stealing proprietary information, trade secrets, and intellectual property. Competing companies and nation state wides may target organizations to obtain valuable information and insights. Political reasons or any kind of ideological reasons. Now, hacktivism involves using cyber attacks as a means of expressing political or ideological views. Hacktivists target government agencies, corporations, or other organizations to protect or raise awareness about specific issue. They may deface websites, leak sensitive information, or disturb services to make their points. Personal vendetta or any revenge. Now, some cyber attacks are also carried out by individuals seeking revenge or retaliation against a person, a group of organization they hold a grudge against. And finally, cyber terrorism. Now, in rare cases, cyber attacks can be carried out as an act of terrorism to create fear, chaos, and widespread disruption. These attacks aim to cause significant harm to society and can target critical infrastructure such as power grids or transport systems and much more. While understanding the motives behind cyber attacks help in developing effective cyber security strategies to mitigate and respond to these threats. Now, how does cyber attacks exactly happen? Now, cyber attacks are orchestrated processes that aim to compromise the security and integrity of computer systems and digital data. Attackers gather information about their targets, such as identifying potential vulnerabilities, security weaknesses, and valuable data they can exploit. 
Now, this phase involves passive techniques like searching publicly available information and active techniques like scanning for open ports on the target's network. So, regular security assessment, timely software updates, user awareness training, and implementing robust security measures are essential in mitigating these risk of cyber attacks from happening. Now, cyber criminals are constantly devising their sophisticated techniques to exploit vulnerabilities in systems and networks, leading to devastating consequences for victims. So, understanding these threats and implementing proactive safety measures is crucial for safeguarding our digital assets and personal information. So, here are the common types of cyber threats that are prevalent in the current times in no particular order. Now, firstly on the list, we have malware. Now, malware encompasses various types of malicious software designed to infiltrate system data, steal and disrupt operations and gain unauthorized access. It includes various types of uh, viruses, worms, trojans, ransomware and spyware etc. Now malware disguises itself as a legitimate files or software to deceive users and avoid detection. It can propagate through infected email attachments, malicious websites or compromised software. Now, one of the real-world examples of this is, in 2017, the WannaCry ransomware attacked thousands of computers worldwide encrypting data and demanding ransom payments in Bitcoin. So, what are the consequences of malware attack? Firstly, data breaches and theft of sensitive information. Next, we have system disruptions, leading to downtime and kind of financial losses. And thirdly, espionage and unauthorized access to personal or corporate networks. But how can you safeguard yourself from happening or protect yourself from malware. So firstly, you need to regularly update your operating systems and software to patch vulnerabilities. Also, install reputable antivirus and anti-malware software and keep them up to date. Thirdly, exercise caution when downloading files from untrusted sources or clicking on any unknown links from the websites or internet. Finally, educate users about safe browsing practices and recognizing potential malware threats. Now, second on the list, we have phishing attacks. Now, phishing attacks are social engineering techniques used by cyber criminals to trick individuals into revealing sensitive information such as login credentials, financial details, or any personal data. Phishing emails often appear to be from reputable sources including banks, social media platforms, or government agencies. They create a sense of urgency or fear to prompt immediate actions. So, make sure you do not click any sort of uh, unreputable sources of emails that you get from any kind of unrestricted resources. Now, what are the consequences of phishing attacks? Firstly, identity theft and unauthorized access to personal accounts. Also, financial losses due to fraudulent transactions by clicking uh, un <coughs> repeat. repeat. Secondly, financial losses due to fraudulent transactions by clicking unknown links from various uh, third-party websites or such and finally compromise of sensitive business data and intellectual property now in 2017 a phishing attack targeted gmail users directing them to a fake login page to steal their credentials so make sure you stay away from all these malicious activities so what are the safety measures you can take against phishing attacks firstly enable multi-factor authentication for all accounts to add an extra layer of security now next Avoid clicking on any suspicious links as discussed earlier. So you have to train employees and individuals to recognize phishing emails and avoid clicking on any sort of unsuspicious links. Also, implement email filtering systems to detect and block phishing attempts. And finally, regularly update your web browsers to protect against known phishing vulnerabilities by installing any kind of antivirus systems. Nevertheless, we have ransomware. Now, Ransomware is a type of malware that encrypts a victim's data, making it inaccessible until a ransom is paid to the attackers. It is a threat to individuals, businesses, and government organizations worldwide. Now, ransomware often uses strong encryption algorithms to lock victims' data securely. It may be delivered through malicious email attachments, compromised websites, or exploit kits. Now, in 2021, the Colonial Pipeline in the United States fell victim to a ransomware attack, leading to the shutdown of operation and a ransom payment to the attackers. So, what are the consequences of ransomware again? Now, again, financial losses due to ransom payments can be a huge factor where you have to pay a lots of lots and amounts of payment or money to the hackers. Data loss and potential leakage of sensitive information. And finally, reputation damage for organizations that experience the successful attacks of ransomware. So, what are the safety measures that you can take against ransomware? 
well, you can regularly back up critical data to an offline or secure location to avoid data loss. Also, maintain up-to-date data software and security patches to protect against known vulnerabilities. Implement network, seg <coughs> repeat. Implement network segmentation to contain the spread of ransomware within the system. And finally, train your employees and individuals to exercise cautions when handling email attachments and links and by regularly security audits, <coughs> repeat, and by conducting regular security audits, you can protect yourself from various kinds of ransomware attacks. Now, fourth on the list, we have DDoS or Distributed Denial of Service Attacks. Now, DDoS attacks aims to overwhelm or targets online services or networks by flooding them with a massive amounts of traffic, rendering them inaccessible to legitimate users. These hackers are typically orchestrated using botnets. Now, the DDoS attacks use multiple devices to create a massive volume of traffic causing service disruptions. Attackers often exploit vulnerable IoT devices to build botnets. But what are the consequences of DDoS attacks? Firstly, it's a downtime and service disruptions leading to financial losses. Secondly, damage to a company's reputation and customer trust. If you know, in 2018, GitHub experienced one of the largest DDoS attacks in history with traffic peaking at 1.35 TBPS. And in 2016, a massive DDoS attacker or DES provider disrupted several major websites and services. And finally, server and web website vulnerability. Now, diversion of attention from the actual attack to dealing with the aftermath of this can also be a crucial consequence wherein your server or website vulnerability has already been caused. So, what are the safety measures against DDoSs? Firstly, deploy tracking filtering, repeat, deploy track, <coughs> repeat, deploy traffic filtering and blade trimming to detect and block malicious traffic during an attack. Utilize content delivery networks or CDNs to distribute traffic across multiple servers and reduce the impact of DDoS attacks. Also, regularly monitor traffic and set up alerts for unusual patterns indicating an ongoing attack. Invest in scalable infrastructure to handle sudden traffic surges and prevent service disruptions. So these are some of the safety measures that you can take against DDoS attacks and help yourself to protect against them. And finally on the list we have SQL injection. SQL injection is a web application vulnerability that allows attackers to manipulate a website's data by injecting malicious SQL code into input fields. This can lead to unauthorized access, data theft or data manipulation. Now if the SQL injection is successful, the database might execute the attacker's injected SQL code alongside the legitimate query, granting unauthorized access to data, modifying or deleting data or even compromising the entire database. So SQL injection exploits <coughs> repeat SQL injection exploits poorly sanitized user inputs in web application <coughs> repeat SQL injection exploits poorly sanitized user inputs in web applications which can extract, modify or delete data from affected databases. So what are the consequences of SQL injection? Well, unauthorized access to sensitive data including user credentials and personal information. Secondly, data manipulation or deletion leading to data integrity issues. And finally, disclosure of confidential information and compliance violation. Now, a real life example of uh, SQL injection is in 2008, SQL injection was used to breach Heartland payment systems, resulting in the theft of millions of credit card records. So, what are the safety measures that you can take against SQL injection? Firstly, adopt secure coding practices such as parameterized queries and input validation to prevent SQL injection vulnerabilities from happening. Secondly, conduct regular security assessments and penetration testing to identify and address potential SQL injection flaws. Next, implement the principle of least privilege to limit database access rights for application users so that the hackers cannot easily dive into your database. And finally, stay updated on the latest security patches and updates for frameworks and applications. So these were some of the top five common types of cyber security threats that are prevalent in today's times. And with that, we've come to the end of today's session on different types of cyber threats. I hope you want <coughs> I hope you found this tutorial informative and helpful. Thank you for watching the video guys. If you like this video, subscribe to our <coughs> repeat. Subscribe to our channel Simply Learn for more such amazing videos. If you have any further queries regarding any of the concepts covered in today's tutorial, feel free to let us know in the comment section below and our team of experts will be more than happy to help resolve all your queries at the earliest. Until next time, thank you and keep